Welcome back to Fright Fest, Adam Egypt Mortimer. It is me. It's I you in person. It's so it's like it's a triumphant return to be back. Yes. When I missed you, you guys. Man. When were you last here? I was here in 2015. Yes. With my very first feature. Yep. Called Some Kind of Hate. Yep. Which uh, you guys were such big supporters of, and that was lovely. And it was really cool to be here. And I basically made a whole other movie just so I could come back and hang out with you guys. Absolutely again, perfect. I it so much. <laughs> <laughs> so. Take us through your career from uh, Some Kind of Hate. Since then, yeah, so well, so I made Some Kind of Hate initially because several years before that movie, I had read this novel called In This Way I Was Saved, and I was like, I want to make a movie out of this. And the novelist, Brian, and I started working to adapt that into a movie, and after we'd had the script in a shape where it felt pretty awesome, I was like, dude, I, I have completely conned you because there's no way I can get this movie made it's pretty ambitious I've never made a movie before let's make a different movie yeah <laughs> and uh and that's where some kind of hate came from the idea to do a very low budget but you know interesting interpretation of slasher movies uh as sort of a way to make a movie mm. and even that wound up taking forever so you because you'll, you'll be like let's just quickly do this thing that's no money and then three years of your life go by you're trying to do that one and raise the no money but we made that movie and we showed it at festivals and we came out here and um, I think probably just about a month before I came out to London with that film, I had met Spectre Vision, yep. who, who really liked my first film and said, what else do you have? And I said, I've been waiting for somebody to say, what else do you have? We've got this thing called Daniel Isn't Real, although the title was different back then. And they said, yeah, let's do this. And so actually in, when I was here in London, about ready to show that film, I remember I was on a Skype call with Spectre Vision having like one of our right. first conversations about that script yep. and about like what are the next steps to get this movie made. So it is, so here I am again. Here and you instead are. Instead of talking about it, we're showing it. Absolutely. Be on in literally, what, half an hour? Yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think, and since then, since 2015, when I was here, I also, I produced this movie called Holidays. That was like yes. an anthology and that was a really fun way for me to meet other directors and see how a number of other filmmakers work and that yeah. was sort of like, you know, helpful. Everything like that is so helpful to, to meet other filmmakers. Sure. Because you can sometimes really work in isolation and go, yes. what the hell, how, do you, how do you do this? Collaborate. How, do, Collaborate. how does anybody do this? Yeah. Um, so we did that and then we shot Daniel Isn't Real about exactly a year ago. We finished shooting it in Brooklyn. Right. Now, obviously, the folks are going to be lucky enough to see this here um, this afternoon. A lot of people wanted tickets, but they can't get in. Um, I would recommend they just storm. Yeah, just, just, no, just no. Like <laughs> actually, by the time this goes out, that won't happen. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's going to be an extraordinary experience mm -hmm. watching it on mm -hmm. that screen. Mm -hmm. It's going to look and sound flipping incredible. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, well, it's, it's a, a very visual movie. Vista, I was picture. super obsessed in this movie with like the colors, the sound design, the, yeah. it's the immersive experience of it. So to see it on a giant screen is going to be... Ins I don't always love to sit and watch the movie, but I'm going to have to watch it on this giant screen sure. tonight, for sure. Um, for the p people that can't get in, also the movie's coming out from Arrow yeah. uh, next year, quarter yeah. one next year. Yeah. Um, for the folks that aren't in that screening, tell us, uh, not, don't tell us about it, but say what the, the audience or what the viewer can expect from Daniel. Well, it, it's like, uh, okay, it, it's a movie that starts as a... Uh, a very intimate psychological thriller beginning with children and imaginary friends and fantasies and then it kind of explodes into this like manic state of kineticism and color and mm. then it becomes cosmic horror and so it takes yeah. us on this journey from like sort of disturbed family dynamics to something that is like Love crafting, yeah, actually, I think. yeah, possibly. Element of that. Yeah, I mean, I guess when we talk about cosmic horror, you can't help but think of course. Love, Lovecraft, and um, so a lot of people have been fond of comparing it to the Hellraiser films. Yes. I think because there's this sort of demonic netherworld vibe to it uh, eventually. Uh, but it was very important to me to sort of to take that journey from intense. We're in the, we're in the, a bathroom with a mother and 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 her son and like something insane is going on in their minds and how are they dealing with it and then to go into some pretty psychedelic places. And how is it dealing with Spectre Vision? Because they've been behind some terrific genre they're pictures great. recently. Yeah, they're Mandy, obviously the forthcoming uh, Richard Stanley picture. Yeah. I know, I was sandwiched right in between uh, Mandy and Richard Stanley, yes. which is a fun, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's fun to be that Oreo cream inside of those two chocolate wafers of, of <laughs> insanity. Um, yeah, Spectre Vision is like, uh, 
obsessed with supporting a filmmaker's specific vision. Yeah. And like they, they're not going to say yes to a project unless it is, in a way, something that nobody else quite would do. Yeah. You know, they, 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 I was having trouble getting Daniel made because people would read it and say, well, we really like the script, but it's so ambitious that we don't know how, how to do it for a low budget. And if you do it for a really high budget, it's too insane to be, you know, and Spectre Vision were the people who said, we can do it at this budget, and we love that it's insane, and how can we help you make it the way you want it to be? Mm -hmm. They're just very cool people, and they're, they're all so creative, and like, they know a lot about music, so they would introduce me to composers. And, well, Elijah, you know. I mean, Elijah was one of the folks behind Spectre Vision. He just knows the genre inside oh, out, yeah, and yeah. he knows music as yeah, well. I was, I mean, well, you go to his DJs house, and he's, and he's, he's, like, got, a, he's got like a record collection that you need ladders to like get up to the top. It's just insane. I mean, yeah. he knows every style of music yeah. as well. I mean, I know a lot about music, but he's like, what, he blows me out of the water every single time. Yeah, so. and, and so and he works as sort of like a spiritual advisor to the movie. You know, mm. all, the, all, all the partners do where, you know, they'll get... You'll sort of want to do a certain kind of thing, and they'll get so excited. But oh my god, yeah, it would be so cool if we had that kind of music here or whatever. And um, they have such great. I mean, it was really the music thing became such a great collaboration yep. with Spectre Vision because we talked to a couple different composers, and then they they introduced me to this guy Chris Clark, who is who was a Warp Records recording yes. artist, and now he's moved to a different label under the name Clark. And his music is fascinating. It wasn't the music that I wanted to use in the movie. But he was so fascinating in his sound, and once we started talking and realized that I could push him to do something he'd never done before, and he had sort of skills and visions to approach it in a way that I hadn't thought of, and that was, a lot of that was because of the, the Spectre Vision people like just obsessively listening to music and trying to sure. fit weird pieces together. <laughs>